Good morning, everybody. So good to be here this morning and just welcome online as well to everyone online because I think there's a lot of people at home today. Um, lots of sickness and things going around. What a shame. Um, we do, do hope you all get well soon and feel better soon for those that can't make it today. But lovely to see everyone this morning. I've got my glasses on so I can see you better. <laughs> I'll spend my week trying to not wear them and it's ridiculous i'm now getting stage it's just like ah well just have to face up to facts i need to wear them um so yeah it's been great this morning to be with one another and we have been doing this amazing series on one another and how wonderful it's been i hope you've enjoyed it has anyone anyone enjoyed it <laughs> Everyone and getting something from it. We've had, let me try and remember now, this is a test. This is a test, let me remember. Love one another. Love one another to stop. That's the, that's the capstone, that one right there. Love one another. We've had confess to one another. We've had, oh, I'm going to get this wrong. Forget, no, 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 we've not had forgive yet. Pray for one another. We've had serve one another. I've missed one. Be kind to one another. And this morning, I'm going to be talking about teach one another, teach one another, um, which is, I, um, I hope, going to bring um, and expand a great passage from uh, Colossians 3 this morning. But I love how each one another, and there's about 59 approximately in the New Testament, which gives us keys to how to relate to and how not to, <laughs> as well, to each other and how to, you know, really get the best out of each other, how to build one another, how to strengthen one another. Um, and I just love that. I love this, this series. It's great. And last week, I loved how Stuart focused on the who and not the how. And he focused on Jesus. And that, that was just beautiful how he, he just, yeah, Jesus is why we're here. That's at the end of the day. That's why we're serving. That's why we're forgiving one another. That's why we're loving one another. Because of Jesus. Because what he's done for each one of us. You know, Jesus was the greatest teacher there's ever been. There's no other teacher that has ever walked this planet than Jesus. He was the greatest teacher of all. His main ministry, he did many things. Miracles, and beyond compare, just absolutely wonderful but his main ministry was to teach was to come and teach us how to live how to love one another and how to um, be kind to one another and all of these things that we've been looking at he came to teach repentance forgiveness freedom redemption and what life should be like what life should really be like um, on, on this earth and he wanted to teach us about the Father's love for each one of us. He wanted to bring heaven down and radically change us from the inside out so that we would never be the same again, transformed into new creations. Absolutely, no more are we having to wear those um, filthy rags, as it says in the Bible. But he didn't come with exams and tests and saying, well, I want to check that you're going to be doing all these things. And he's not there with his rule book. He came to simplify. And I love that. I love when we look at the gospel and we look at how Jesus taught in parables and stories. And he sat with people um, and, and taught them in, in such a simple way. The parable of the sower, the parable of the lost coin, all of these things that you can remember because it's simple and it's stuff we can apply and stuff that we can use to um, and make our lives full and rich and all of the things that he, um, he would desire for us. And most of all, he taught us by who he was and what he modeled and he modeled character of grace, of humility, of kindness, of compassion, of self-control, and all these things that we should aspire to, to, to model ourselves like as well. So it's because of him, it's because of him that we're here, it's because of him um, that, that we are together today. And believing in him, that involves belonging. 
We've heard it said before, you belong here. We all belong together because of him, because of what he did for each one of us. We've been adopted into God's family all together. We've been adopted into a family, a big family. This is a great family, the Vine Church family. We've been adopted into this family, but with that, like any family, brings responsibility. Because in every family, you know, everyone's got their, their things they've got to do and things that, you know, to help the, the household be good, to, to, to live well to, with one another, for it to thrive and, and be at peace, most of all. And not every household's peaceful. <laughs> but that's what our desire should be, to live in peace with one another. Um, and in Colossians 3, that gives us some keys. We're going to be looking at that um, in more, more detail. But first of all, just a little um, statement that I want to say is basically your transformed life through Jesus transforms lives. So that's something I want you to think about as a thread as we talk about teaching one another. If we can transform well, Jesus transforms our life. But if we work on ourselves and through Jesus, that will transform other lives as well. And the greatest commission that Jesus gave us in Matthew 28 was, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, teaching them to observe all I have commanded. So we're all commissioned to teach one another. And I'm just going to ask, are there any teachers? Any teachers? Have we got any teachers here? Oh yeah, we've got Natalia and Alana. Alana's a teacher as well. But I want to challenge you this morning that you're all teachers. All of you are teachers. Have you ever guided someone, modeled an example, explained something to someone? Mums, dads, taught your children how to ride a bike. Your teachers, you know how to, to do it. It's in there. And some people find it a little bit freaky when you say, teach one another. Like, well, that's not me. I can't do that. I can't teach because that's not my job. That's the, the pastor's job or the leader's job. I'll just sit and learn, which is good. But Jesus has commissioned us to go into all nations and teach what he has commanded. So, yes, you can. You can be a teacher. And although they go through huge amounts of training, teachers in schools and everything, they go through huge amounts of training, and they don't stop, I'm sure. As soon as they become teachers, they continuously learn. They have to do lots of development. And as Christians, that's something that we should want to be as active learners, constantly wanting to learn more and absorb more. I love listening to um, people like Alan preach and Stuart preach and Aaron and, and just listening and, and, and absorbing what, what wisdom they have. And it really, really um, yeah, speaks to me and helps me with my life. But as a teacher, as I said, comes responsibility. So just like we bring up a family or you know we help members of our family and we, we teach and, and model our lives well, I want to ask you are, you, are you modeling life well? Are you walking well? Are there things, you know, that um, maybe, you're, maybe you're winging it? Has anyone ever winged anything? <laughs> I have. And it doesn't feel good. You might get away with it. Remember at school, winging a couple of cheeky wee exams. <laughs> Didn't feel good, might have got a good, good mark, but didn't feel like, felt a little bit like an imposter. And I don't like feeling like that. So, being an active learner, really seeking God's face, really seeking his heart for us is so, so important so that we can pass that on. And that's what it is. It's a transaction back and forward. We receive so we can give back to others and show them, demonstrate to them what it's like to walk well. Walk well. Who's ever seen the ministry of silly walks on Monty Python? They don't walk well. Do all this. We want to walk well, uprightly, looking to Jesus, 
confidently, with her eyes up, not down, looking down um, in dismay, but looking up, up to heaven, knowing the plans he has for us, knowing his plans and purposes are for good and not for harm. So walking well and, and not winging it, it's so, modeling life well is so, so important. So be committed to being a lifelong learner of the Word of God. Be committed to doing that. Don't take it for granted and don't, um, yeah, just, just walk in step with Jesus and show others how to do that too. I believe if we learn together how to live well together, it's the most powerful way to demonstrate the transform- transforming power of the gospel. So if we learn how to live well together, it will demonstrate the transformation power of the gospel like nothing else. So it's so important, church, as we gather that we learn to live well with one another. And, And in Colossians 3, verses 16 to 17, Paul gives us five keys. So that's the verse we're going to be looking at, the two verses. In Colossians 3, verses 16 to 17, And we're going to just unpack it a little bit this morning. We're quite a bit. I'll try and get it in the time. Make sure I get in my my time here. So number one, we are going to look at treasure the message of Christ. Treasure the message of Christ. Treasure the gospel and don't lose sight of what God has done through Jesus for you. Treasure the gospel, the gospel that... It brought you to salvation, the message of Jesus that brought you here, that br- adopted you into God's family and made you be- and helped you belong in this, this house. And the freedom, the grace, the unconditional love poured out. And in verse 16, it says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. And in the message version, it says, let the word of Christ, the message have the run of the house. Have the run of the house. I love that. Don't box it in. Give it plenty of room in your lives. So let the gospel be central to everything. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. Let it permeate your life and take residence in your heart. We have been made brand new through the gospel, transformed. So treasure it. Treasure it as we build our community together, as we build life together, as we do life together, as we reach out to those in the community that we can demonstrate the power of the gospel. So that's the first key, is treasure the message of Christ. Treasure it, treasure it so deeply in your heart. Let it dwell, let it reside. Don't, don't be complacent about it. Always make it center of who you are and why you belong. If you go back in Colossians, and I really encourage you to read the whole um, chapter. It's so, so good, so good. And it's such a life-giving chapter. It summarizes basically how we should live well together. It's got an amazing summary. Uh, well, not summary, it's so much depth in it. We, could, we probably could do about, I don't know, a whole year of sermons on it. But in verse 5, if we go back, Paul describes things that tear down communities. So we're looking at building, strengthening, living well with one another. But in verse 5, just to give a bit of context, Paul's describing things that tear down communities, pull down and destroy us personally as well. It talks about sexual immorality, promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like, grabbing whatever you want, whenever you want it, basically satisfying your feelings, desires for things instead of God. In verse 5, we're told to put to death those things. Just in the message, I'll I'll read a bit about about that. It says to, um, it likens these things to a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes. What an image that portrays. Filthy set of ill-fitting clothes. I don't want to wear something like that. No way. 
it just just something heavy and ew, not nice at all. It doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't even matter what it looks like. It's what it makes you feel like as well. And it says, yeah, it's just likening these things to a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. So take off those things. That's what Paul's encouraging us to do, those things that fill our flesh. And instead, dress yourself in this new wardrobe. And I love how the message version describes it. It's so, so nice. Um, if I can find my phone, here it is here. And I'm just going to read that to you. Here we go. So in the message version, it says, so chosen by God, this is from verse 12, so chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe that God has picked out for you. No more ill-fitting, dirty clothes. We're going to be wearing this new wardrobe. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive, and completely as the master forgive you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear the all-purpose garment, which is love. The all-purpose one, the one that you don't need any accessories with at all, because that does it all. That's all you need is that all-purpose garment. So this is what a thriving community is built on. This is what a thriving church is built on. These things is what we should aspire, and this is what we need to teach one another. Teach one another compassion. Teach one another kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, even, how to be even-tempered, how to be content with second place. Second key is deeply treasure the Word of God. Deeply treasure it and the life it brings. Don't take it for granted and don't just dip in when you're feeling a bit low or deeply treasure it and the richness it can give to your life, the wisdom, the direction and the, the power it has to restore and transform and shine light in the darkest of places. Don't, don't take it lightly, just deeply treasure the word. It's so, 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 so necessary for our lives. In Hebrew, Hebrews 4, 12, it says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So just treasure the word, treasure the word. And we need that if we're going to teach one another. We can't teach one another if we don't know the word of God. You know, so it's important that we, we, we make sure, because if someone tells you something as well and you're, a learn, you're learning, you need to be able to know and go back to the word of God and see that that's the truth as well. And, you know, I'm sorry if anyone has been misled or taught and, by someone and it's not been aligned with the word of God. And I do pray for you. I do pray that God will heal your heart because, unfortunately, that will happen from time to time. There may be some. That's why we need to know the word of God. We need to know what he's saying about us and what he wants us to do so that we can um, take that teaching. Third point is teach wisely. Teach wisely. Oh, we need wisdom. Wisdom to do this. Don't be a speck collector. <laughs> okay? Don't be a speck collector. There's a verse in the Bible that talks about don't go and take the speck out of your brother's eye before you remove the plank from your own eye. So don't go around on a mission <laughs> collecting specks, being a speck collector, because you need to look at your heart first and know where you're, where you're at, first of all. And Matthew, that's in Matthew 7, verses 3 to 5. Teach wisely, you know, and teach in love. Wear that all-purpose garment. When love is there... There will be that two-way communication, loving each other, encouraging one another, lining it up with God's word, building up, not tearing down, you know, being able to come alongside in relationship with each other and saying, 
are you okay? You know, I notice that you're fearful these days. Do you know in the Bible it says, don't fear. I just want to encourage you. It's not about saying, by the way, I think that you should be living like that. You know, we can encourage and we can, we can teach and model and, and disciple in, in, a, in a much better way than that. That's how Jesus did it. He came and he told stories, as I said, told parables and modeled. And, and you, you just wanted, everyone wanted to be like him. Everybody wanted and, um, to be like Jesus. And that's who we should want to be like. So teaching wisely. I was thinking back to when the kids were really small and we, you teach them how to speak. But you don't be like, speak. <laughs> okay, do this now. It's a natural thing. It's something that, you know, you, 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 you talk and they copy and, you know, you do encourage them, but um, it's not a forced thing. It's something that you can, you can do naturally or ride on a bike. It takes time. Who remembers running after with a sore back, trying to run after the bike and the wobble and, and it's such a joy to watch and it's such a privilege to watch people learn and kids learn and I love that. And it's God's great design for life. It's God's great design for our life. We receive the life-giving word. We let it dwell in us richly. We apply the truth and the wisdom and the direction. It breathes. And then we help others to do the same thing. I love speaking with Emmanuel. Is Emmanuel here? Emmanuel's here. She absolutely is a testimony of, of how to do this. She teaches me so much because she's just bursting with joy. She teaches me joy, absolute joy in every circumstance, even when things are so, so difficult. Emmanuel shows joy and she just sees the tiny details that God's doing in her life and that just speaks volumes to me. It teaches me to see those little things and to be <clears throat> to find joy in, in what God's doing in the smallest, smallest of details. It's a great example of how to teach one another. Absolutely. And it's not to overwhelm you. So some people might be like, oh, I, don't, I can't teach anybody. And, you know, this is just being who God called you to be, walking in truth, walking in humility, walking in kindness and compassion and all of these things. And remembering the gospel being center of who you are and why you're here and why you belong. And that will, that will be the model for your life and wearing that all-purpose garment. People will see it and they'll say, I want that. I want that. I want to look like that. Quite often on my Instagram feed, you get these amazing people that go to these shops and show you how to look dress properly and it's quite it's quite good they do they do, and you're like well that's quite nice I might go to H&M or Zara because that's a nice thing but when you're wearing your all-purpose garment of love people will be attracted to Jesus they will want to have that as well they will want to wear the same as you so my fourth point when we're looking at Colossians here, and I don't know, sorry, I'm going to find it here. Sorry, my voice is a little bit crackly, guys. I'm sounding a little bit like Barry White. Right, hang on. Here we go. So from verse 16, I'm going to read it again. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your, gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So we've looked at the message of Christ dwelling in us richly. You know, the message, the gospel message, dwelling in us, having the run of the house with all wisdom, teaching wisely and knowing that we've removed the plank from our own eye before we maybe approach someone and just encourage them about the speck in their eye. But it says here, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in our heart. Sing your heart out. 
that's what we need to do. Sing your heart out. So point number four from this um, passage is sing your heart out as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in our hearts. Our brains are wired for music. I bet you can recount lots of lyrics from songs that you heard way back as a child. Um, you know, it's amazing how our brains work. And I just love that God gave us music so we can really understand scripture and apply it. And, and we can recount scripture and we can recount the blessings of God and how we can be thankful and all these wonderful things like God's faithfulness in the midst of trial. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Such a beautiful, beautiful way to express and proclaim together and learn together. That helps us build and strengthen one another. His amazing grace. Singing, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That's just, we won't forget that. We won't forget that. Or here I am, Lord, send me. And I'll be, I'll be the first to say, yes, Lord, send me. So those, I love that God gave us music. And our amazing worship band, let's give it up for the worship band. They are awesome. They are so good. And they teach us, they teach us how to reach up to heaven and receive from God and, and to give thanks and to, to, to praise his wonderful name. And just for his amazing love. And, and I love that. They teach us and lead us into his presence. Such a beautiful, beautiful thing. So sing your heart out to God. Sing your heart out. And sing to each other, if you dare. <laughs> I won't be with a voice like that. In fact, I won't at all, because that would not be a good idea. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think singing together is a beautiful thing. And it's, it does. It builds and it, it strengthens final point is live from the word all of our life should be an act of worship to God whether it's eating sleeping resting playing whatever it looks like all of our life should be an act of worship to God be doers of the word and not he just hearers of the word and let my life and that's my prayer is let my life be honoring to you God whatever I do let it honor you with everything I have so just to summarize this morning, remember that you've been transformed by the power of the gospel, what Jesus did on the cross. You have been made new in him. Take off those things. Take off those things which taint and just don't make it nice. And instead, put on the beautiful clothes that God has custom made for you, a designer label like no other. Kindness, humility, quiet strength, those things breathe life. That's what we want to wear. And above all else, your garment of love. And then teach one another. Maybe this morning you feel hopeless. Maybe you do feel like you're wearing those ill-fitting, dirty clothes. Maybe you feel weighed down and ugly and that you don't wanna you, you don't wanna show yourself. You feel a bit ashamed. Jesus is calling you this morning and inviting you to take them off. Put them down. And that might feel a little bit vulnerable, it might feel a little bit scary, but I really encourage you. He has the most beautiful, freedom-giving, weightless, priceless garment to cover it all, his grace. So I'm just going to pray. He knows your name. He knows who you are. So let's just pray. Father God, I thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your love, God, your all-purpose garment of love, Father, and I just pray for anybody here, God. Who needs to hear your voice?
God, that you would reach out your hand, Father, and touch their heart. And that they would know that you'll cover them, God. That you'll cover them and that they can lay it down before you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for this morning, guys. Let's just remember that we're all teachers. You know, when we're with one another, we can, we can, in relationship, speak to one another and encourage one another. Um, and that's how we teach and model our lives well. So I encourage you to do that this week. But bless you guys and have a good week.